our decisions are not as important as the consequences. We should okay. consider the consequences right. before making the decision. Welcome to Mission Driven. I'm Derek. And I'm Brother A. Mission Driven is here for us to provide you with information and resources so that you may be able to identify those around you that are struggling with addictions. We are a Christ-based organization that works with addicts every day. Now, Brother A, once again, we're going to be continuing on our topic that we started last time, which Correct. was people, places, and things. And we right. spent quite a bit of time on people and places, um, but let's kind of do a little bit of a recap of what we talked about there. Absolutely, Derek. You know, uh, this topic is so important as it relates to uh, relapse prevention because uh, people, places, and things play a huge role in whether you're successful in your recovery or not. Right. Um, and, and like you mentioned, we talked quite a bit about uh, people and places on, in our last podcast. However, uh, uh, you know, they, they, they actually work somewhat interchangeable. Um, it starts, obviously, with the people you choose to associate with uh, right. because they dictate the other two. Right. They dictate the places you end up going. Uh, they dictate the things you end up doing. You know, I believe this is why the Bible in Proverbs uh, specifically mentions bad company corrupts good man. Right. Uh, because, you you know, if, if you show me your friends, you show me the people That's you right. associate with, I can tell you who you are. Right. You know, because they're dictating the, the, the places you go and the things that you're doing. You know, we were just we were just in a discussion talking about an individual we know uh, that that began vaping for whatever reason. Uh, uh, however, uh, they had never been exposed to that growing right. up and in, involved in that type of activity in their life. They didn't see their parents doing it. They didn't see any of those things. However, they got into it. They're working at a, a, a specific place right? around certain people that likely vape because vaping has become and smoking uh, uh, has been another way of socializing. Right. And so you end up in the company of people. Uh, if you if you stay in the company of people, remember my last quote, yeah. if you sit in the barber chair long right. enough, you end up getting a haircut. That's right. And so uh, li it's likely he ended up getting his haircut. Yeah. Yeah. And it's and it's real easy because I'm like, and we've also talked same idea of the, the barbershop is also you become the product of those that you're paying around with. Correct. I mean, like, like you said, show me the people and places that you're going. I'll show you your character. Correct. And it, it just really is. So the biggest thing is if you don't want to be associated by that, even though you may not be doing it, then don't be with those people, places, things, because eventually you're going to get your hair cut. You know, the Lord, the Lord revealed to me uh, several years back when I was coming out of my addiction in uh, Teen Challenge, in the Adult and Teen Challenge program, how, how powerful exposure is. You know, I grew up in an environment, the housing projects in New Orleans. Uh, I saw a lot of activity happening in that environment that it really at the time I didn't I didn't necessarily identify as being wrong or bad right. in any way because it was normal in the environment right. uh, that I was in. You know, my, my parents smoke, everyone around me smoked. So I, I remember at 10 years old starting to smoke. Right. Stealing my mom's cigarettes and, you know, a, a, a beer would be in the home. Alcohol would be in the home. I remember you remember the little uh, ponies, Miller ponies. No, I don't. They used they, to we didn't them. have those in my home. It, well, yeah. Uh, well, you know, my parents. Yeah. I know your parents. <laughs> yeah, I know your parents. So they weren't in your home, but they were in my home. Yeah. And my parents would have company over and 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 uh, they would drink those ponies. Right. And, you know, interesting enough, the parent, my parents, particularly my mother would say, you know, discourage me and my siblings from doing that. No, no, you don't need to smoke at right. the same time while she's doing it. Right. Uh, that doesn't work. It's not effective. No, it, yeah, it doesn't work. The do as I say, not as I do type thing. It doesn't, it doesn't work. I mean, because I'm looking at it and I'm saying, hey, you look like you're having a good time doing it. Right. You look like you're having a, a, a fun doing it. Um, I want to try that. Right. And so first opportunity, I tried it. So, uh, and I can't really go back and look at that and say, I, uh, I, I when I tried it, I necessarily liked it. Right. I just did it. Right. right. 
uh, my peers, the, the people that are associated with in that v- environment was doing it. Right. So it was the thing. Right. You know, we, you know, we're yeah. talking about the people, places and things. things. So, so it was in that place. Housing projects seemed normal there around the people there that influence the things that right. I began doing. Right. Uh, and as I was, as I was doing it, it wasn't a thing of me saying, Hey, this is, this is great. Right. You know, but it became a habit. Right. Because I thought in order to be cool and accepted and liked, Right. That it was, a, it, it was the thing to do. It was right. the thing to do in that environment, right. in that place around those people. Uh, and so I continued to do it. But, but, but the consequences, the kind of, I heard a great, uh, a great man say, uh, we should consider, uh, it, the, he's, he's, he, he said that the, our decisions are not as important as the consequences. We should okay. consider the consequences right. before making the decision. Right. Of course, at that age, uh, I'm not thinking that way. I'm not right. thinking no, hey, no. what the consequences. I don't really even think there is consequences associated right. with it. I just thought it was, hey, being cool. Right. I want to be cool. Yeah. And 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 you're so impressionable at that age. You're easily influenced at that age. And if you're in an environment where these types of things are prevalent, uh, and uh, then you know the likelihood of you engaging it uh is is high right uh, uh uh now it doesn't mean that you will continue it because i i know a lot of friends that tried a lot right. of different things but they didn't like it right uh and so they didn't keep continue to do it right um and it wasn't as important to them in or, in order to be cool and accepted to continue to do those things so uh they may have not con- but the large percentage the large a percentage of people in that environment where that was prevalent uh, where that was considered the norm, uh, they continued it. Right. Hmm. So while we've been discussing, if you have felt that you know somebody that's been struggling with this or you yourself is struggling with this, you know what? We are here for you. Reach out. You can go find us on the web at atctn.org. You click on that Get Help Now button right there and somebody will be in contact with you within 24 hours or you can go and pick up the phone and call, give us a call at 833-462-8286. Uh, we are here to help you, and we want to help you, um, and we can be here for you. So, Yeah, so, you know, the, the interesting thing is, you know, I came to the Lord, surrendered my life, changed my life. and But, you know, I still realize even today the, the, the impact of people, places, and things. Right. Um, it continues to to ha- play a significant role in who we are and what we do. Right. Um, give you another example. I've I've, uh, I've uh, spent nineteen years, over nineteen years now, in the United States Navy Reserves. Right. Um, I had some choices to make when I when I joined the reserves and started engaging other military personnel, going on deployments, going on missions, uh, and I had to make decisions about the people in the military, even that I chose to associate with in those places, right? Because I knew that it would dictate the things I did, right? And a lot of them, you know, they 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 were. They like to party. They yeah. like to drink. You know, you, you've heard the slogan, drink like a sailor. Right. Um, um, well, I, I can attest, not all sailors drink. Right. Uh, I'm one. Um, however, uh, uh, it, it, it there's a lot of truth to that. But, you know, they begin to say that as some as as, as it that slogan or that adage, drink like a sailor. Uh, uh, as if it's some type of badge of honor, you know, right. that you're supposed to be a drinker if you're in the Navy. If, right. If you, you know, you're supposed to be a certain way, act a certain way, conduct yourself. And I would see people, you know, I remember being deployed in Afghanistan with a group, a couple females. And I, and I, and I, at one point I asked them, asked the females, because it seemed 
as if they were working real hard to try to fit in with the guys. Hmm. And they would use language and they would right. conduct themselves in a way uh, that it was clear to me, you're conducting yourself in this way right. to be accepted, to fit in. Um, so they were allowing the influences in that place right. where those people were concerned, those particular men or military people were concerned that 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 uh, somehow made it made it seem as though if you're not acting this way, you can't be accepted as I don't, I don't know real military right real, right that they they felt this need to have to conduct themselves and they said when well, I asked the, the, the couple of days, so why do you feel you have to use the language and 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 conduct yourself that way to fit in you know why can't you be you you right you know because I'm gonna be me right and 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 I know why part big part of it for me is you know it's it, it, a big part of it is 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 having your uh, own identity, finding right. your own identity. I find my identity in Christ. Right. So I'm uh, I'm comfortable in who God uh, uh, has made me to be, and and you know whether it, whether some accept me or some don't, it 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 doesn't it doesn't play a role in what I do. Right. Uh, because I realize no matter. Uh, who it is or, or, or what I do. Right. There are going to be some who accept me, some who won't. Right. Right. Uh, but people, places, and things continue. I, I don't care who you are. You don't have to be someone that's in recovery. Right. Um, so, so think about that for a moment though. If, if it, if, if it plays a role in the lives of people who are not recovering addicts, how much more does it play a role in the lives of, of those who are recovering addicts. Right. And it's very, that's a very good point because those that, and we've talked about this before, those that are in recovery or addicts are more um, apt to do something that they're not supposed to Correct. Or, or fall into those traps Correct. a lot faster. So yeah, that's just, just thinking about that. Cause and it, I was thinking as you're talking about places um, and sometimes it's, it's, it's not an instant thing. Mm-hmm you're driving home and you decided to go past this certain bar you right. drove by and it was a little bit out of your way. Right. You just drove by and went past it. The f- next week you go by, you slow down a little bit. Right. And then you end up going past it. Right. Another week you pull in, you actually pull into the parking lot. You sit there and he's like, what am I doing? I'm not going to do this. Right. You turn around and come back out the next week you pull in and you, and you, you go into and sit down at the bar. I mean, it can be very gradual, and it's what it's the place, and it's what's causing that trigger, and it can be a slow fade. So it doesn't necessarily happen overnight, mm-hmm. and so you just have to be careful with it and with that. And it's yeah, like you're discuss- talking about people that ha- are not in recovery. If they struggle with it, how much more would somebody with recovery struggle with that? Correct. You know, I, I share a group uh, with the Men and Adult and Teen Challenge called an autobiography in five short chapters. Uh, it, it starts off in chapter one, talking about walking down a particular street and there's a hole in the street. Okay. And and the individual falls in the in into the hole, and he's crying out in the, in the hole uh, 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 to get out of the hole. Uh, it takes him a long time to get out. He gets out of the hole. Uh, he walks down the same street again. Hmm. And it, but but the first time he was in the hole. He 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 wouldn't take ownership for falling down that hole. He said right. it's not my fault. Uh, uh, but it took him forever to get out of it. Right. But he walks down the same street. He falls into the the hole again in the second chapter. Right. Still says it's not my, my fault. fault. Yeah. And it takes him forever to get out. He walks down the same street again in the third chapter, uh, <laughs> uh, uh, and falls down the hole. Right. And, 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 and well, actually, the third chapter, he walks down the street and he just he jumps in the hole because it's become a habit. Right. And it takes him again a long time to get out. Right. The 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 the, the fourth chapter, he walks down the, the street uh, again. Jumps in. Go goes in the hole again, but he he he's he's realizing 
that it, he's starting to come into acceptance that it's his fault. Hmm. It still takes him a long time to get out. Right. But he realizes I got to do something different. I may be mixing the chapters up right now, uh, 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 but uh, uh, the 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 because I think the fourth chapter he tries to walk around the hole. Okay. But the fifth chapter, finally, he he go walks down a different street. Wow. So the so the 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 idea there is when you know better. Right. You should do better, but right. we don't always do that. Right. You knew or he knew walking down that street after the first time and maybe maybe even on the first time, the people and the things that were on that street. Why would you go to that place? Right. But you certainly knew in chapter two. Right. Where you're you going. certainly knew in chapter three, but you're still choosing. Right. Because uh, you you haven't you, you don't you haven't come into your own identity. You haven't accept your, accept, accepted yourself because you don't know who you are. Right. And so you're allowing uh, the people and the things on that street to right. dictate who you are. Right. And, and, and because if you don't know, if you don't know who you are, uh, people will tell you, the world will tell you who you are. That's right. And that's why it's so important to, 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 to know who you are and be comfortable in your own skin and to accept yourself right. uh, for who you are, along with all your flaws and issues and failures and all, you still have to love and accept yourself. That's right. And if you can do that, then people can't influence uh, uh, the things you do, the places you go. Right. So I want to ask you, those that are listening or watching this podcast today, are you ready to walk down another street? Are you ready to get that help that you need? Are you ready to help somebody get that help? If you are and you need to help somebody or get help for yourself, reach out to us. Go to atctn.org, click on that Get Help Now button, fill out that survey, and somebody will get in contact with you. Or give us a call at 833-462-8286. We are here to help you be free from these addictions and or help you to give you the tools to help stay others free. and stay free. Yeah. And that's what we're here for. So, well, Brother A, this has been a really great topic. And, uh, of course, we're going to continue next Absolutely. time talking about relapse prevention because that's, that's huge. And so, but we want to thank you for joining us today on Mission Driven. And remember, there is always hope from being free from your addictions. Mm-hmm.